Meeting, uh, call to order. Uh, now, the, uh, uh, which, which of our commissioners are present? Would you identify yourself, please? Uh, Cindy Greengold. Laura Blackwelder. Jonathan Evans. Kathleen Burrell. Okay, so I guess uh, Jeff uh, Larson hasn't checked in yet. We will, uh, I believe Jeff is going to join us, but uh, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first thing on the, our list of uh, items is to approve the agenda. Has everybody had a chance to look at it? <clears throat> or has anybody not had a chance to look at it? Okay. Uh, uh, approval. There we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the motion passes. The agenda is approved. Um, has everybody had a chance to uh, read the minutes from the June 24th planning and zoning meeting? Or has anyone not had a chance to look at those uh, minutes? Okay. Uh, do we have... Uh, any comments or any uh, discussion on the minutes from the June 24th planning meeting? No discussion. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll motion to approve. Do we have second. a second? I'll second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are approved for the June 24th meeting. Uh, now it's my pleasure to introduce our newest member of the Planning Commission, Kathleen uh, Beralt. Is that correct, Kathleen? Perfect, yes. Uh, maybe Kathleen, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm sorry we, we can't uh, meet in person, but uh, well, we're looking forward to hearing from you. Well, thank you. Um, I appreciate the welcome. Uh, yes, I'm, I've lived in the beach for uh, 21 years, and uh, my family and I love it here. And um, in the past uh, two decades, I've, I've had o almost uh, 32 years in public service. 22 of them was in law enforcement um, uh, with a local uh, Prince George's County Police Department, and then the last 10 years I've worked at the uh, Department of Treasury uh, for the uh, Treasury Inspector General, where we uh, oversaw the IRS. So um, I'm very happy to be uh, a commissioner, um, and I, I'm happy that I was approved. Um, I love the beach, and uh, I, I, I love the charm of the town, and certainly um, I think it's such a unique uh, place to live uh, with bordering right on the bay. I mean, I, I was just so surprised when uh, I first came here uh, almost, uh, you know, 25 years ago and I saw that there were houses on the beach and they didn't cost millions of dollars. I was just shocked. So I feel so very fortunate to, uh, to live here in Chesapeake Beach and I'm looking forward to uh, working on the commission. Wonderful. Wonderful. Does anybody uh, want to ask Kathleen any questions? We're happy you're here. Nice <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, well, welcome. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for doing this, Kathleen. We're uh, looking forward to working with you. I really, I really appreciate it, and uh, I'm happy to say yesterday we, I faced right on the bay, and uh, yesterday morning about. 9.30, I kind of thought, hmm, this really looks like quite the storm. And I have six foot char uh, chimes and they were like a pendulum <laughs> swinging yesterday. Wow, so. six foot? Wow. Yeah, yeah, my neighbor. We That's quite that a happened. sound. That's I, quite, I, I, wait a minute, are you on B Street all the way down there? Are those your chimes I hear? They are mine. Oh yes, I love those chimes. <laughs> <laughs> those are six feet? Oh my gosh. Oh, I love those. 
they were a, a, a gift for Christmas, and my neighbor was like, really? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I so. love them. Oh, that's well, great. Thank you for having those. <laughs> well, thank you. And they're, they're, they're here, and uh, they, they survived yesterday, and they, you know, I thought, why didn't I take them down? But anyway, they did well, so, and I'm happy Good that for you. all Good the residents you. up here in, in the beach, uh, we, we withstood that six, uh, six inches of water, the rain that we got, so. Well, my 10-year-old tree didn't survive. It's over 20, 20 feet of tree is on the ground now. So oh. the climbs may have survived, but my 20-foot tree did not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I am too. It was my dog's shade. So there you have it. But I oh. have a better view of the bay. So there you have that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to look at it. Yeah, that's right. There you go. <clears throat> okay. If we can uh, move on to the next item on the agenda. Who is uh, representing the Calvert County Public Schools? Hi there, my name is Ron Ilkovich with SEI Architects. I'll be representing the Calvert County Public School System as well as the Beach uh, Elementary School stakeholder group that, that put together the presentation that we have here today. Great. Uh, if it's okay, I'll share my screen. Uh, Holly, if you'll unshare and allow me that authority okay all right does everyone see my screen yes i do yes, yes. i do superb I do. so i'm sorry i see it great mr well, chairman before we hear the presentation i wanted to mention something uh i see uh, jeff larson's image here he's trying to get into the meeting and um maybe fran could contact him and give him a phone number so he can call in. He, I can see him on the phone trying to speak to us or uh, communicate with us. Um, I don't know if you, anyone else sees him there. He's got, it says Mr. Larson. I'm here. Well, Jeff, uh, would you I wave if you, can, if you can uh, hear us? Can I can hear speak? you. Okay, Jeff, good, thank you. Very good. I just wanted to make sure we knew he was here. Sorry for the interruption. We see him. No problem. Okay, uh, uh, before Ron, Ron goes ahead, let me just briefly say uh, uh, the purpose of tonight's presentation is to brief the Planning and Zoning Commission on the concept. Uh, they will be uh, presenting this to the, uh, the Appeals Board for approval uh, here, what, the 18th of this month, I believe it is. Chris? Yes. yes, that's right. So uh, they're presenting to us what their their concept is, and if we uh, choose to make a recommendation or uh, make a statement about it, we will have to do that this evening uh, so that it uh, makes it to the appeal board. So uh, I'll leave that to Ron. Ron, if you would uh, take it away. Thank you. Uh, before I begin, just thanks for having us on the agenda this evening. Uh, I want to definitely uh, give credit where credit's due. What you're going to see here today is a result of a, a really collaborative schematic design process. It represents not just the architect's vision, but the, the collective vision of a dedicated group of stakeholders. That stakeholder group included community members, school administrators, teachers, parents, all of whom are members of the beach community and participated in that process. Um, and I believe a number of those stakeholders are either attendees or watching this uh, presentation this evening. So thank you all for joining us in support. Um, in addition to the input of the stakeholder group, we also took very much into consideration the Chesapeake Beach 2040 vision, uh, which was a guide during our stakeholder design process. And we found during the process that the criteria and goals of that vision were very much in line with the criteria and goals that our stakeholder group had in line for the project. So I hope as I make the presentation that you see a lot of those parallels uh, because we definitely uh, tried to include those and make those part of our design process. On the screen in front of you, uh, on the right side, we kind of have an overview of the site context. This is such an amazing place to us as designers and, and architects, particularly for a school. Uh, within a half, within a quarter mile walk, we have the Chesapeake Bay, 
we have Fishing Creek. These are all eco ecological opportunities for the, the pedagogy of the school, that it was a great opportunity to have, have a chance to work on a project like this. Little while, bigger circle out, the half mile walking radius within 10 minutes. To the north, you can get to the bridge across Fishing Creek and really down to the downtown of Chesapeake Beach, which is this lovely little town, uh, as you very well know. Uh, so these opportunities and the, and the kind of semi-urban environment that this, this deals with is a really nice environment to build a school in and to inter interface the school and have it interact as part of the downtown of Chesapeake Beach. Um, on the lower right is a diagram that starts to talk about how uh, your community is starting to integrate pedestrian pathways, bicycle pathways, to really make it an interconnective town, which is something that our school wants to definitely be a part of. On the left of the screen is the existing site plan. Uh, we see here the existing school, which was built in 1953. Right now, the school is slightly over 55,000 square feet of, of footprint, and it's a sprawling one-story elementary school. In addition, there are a number of existing portables and temporary buildings strewn throughout the site, which really identify the need for expansion and uh, improvement of the school facility. But the other thing that we see on the site plan is the limited buildable area that the site offers us. Uh, the existing building will have to remain in use during the construction of the project. And in addition, the site offers us a number of other challenges that, that our project is gonna, is gonna have to make into opportunities. So the forest buffer, the buffer setbacks, steep topography, wetlands, you can see on the north edge of the site how all of those interface and, and limit the buildable area of the site. Uh, we also have the zoning buffer setbacks and of course the existing building which we have to remain, which will have to remain intact during our process. Um, currently the, the building sits in this neighborhood and the zoning of the school is medium density residential. R-MD. Uh, as, as was mentioned, on August 18th, we'll be in front of the Board of Appeals. And one of our challenges on this project is that the use of a school on this existing site, where the school currently is, has to be done by special exception. So we'll be requesting a special exception uh, to allow the continuation and the rebuilding of a school on this site in this residential zone. So that's one of our things that we're proposing to you and, and requesting for you to review. Uh, in this discussion today, and more importantly, in the future as we continue through the uh, uh, process of the design. Um, seen here is the, exist the new footprint and the existing footprint of the existing school kind of together. And you can see how the footprint of the new school really had to sit outside of all of those uh, setbacks and all of those uh, impedances on the site. And to the right, essentially a phasing diagram of how a new school would be built in stage two while the existing school is in operation, then allowing us to move into the new school, demolish the existing building, and repurpose the remaining of this, remainder of the site. So the project will be a new building as well as a new site work to uh, accommodate the building in the, in the downtown area. Um, so we really looked at the project from a very holistic standpoint of integrating the school and the site together. And, and this is kind of where we took some of those 2040 vision planning into great consideration. We wanted to think about <clears throat> what we presented to the school, to the, to the, of the school to the town. And in so doing, our idea was that a lot of times you drive by a school and you see a big parking lot and a school behind it. So we started to segregate uh, already separating where this building school, school building had to be, we started to look at that footprint and see how can we then arrange the site around that footprint and make a kind of a different presentation to this town. Perhaps a presentation that's more of a public amenity uh, to the downtown area, kind of in that 2040 vision idea. We, we, in this top left diagram, broke the site up into a series of zones, a school green, a school building zone, a plaza area for gathering and drop off and pick up, a transit area, which is where all the drop off, the bus loop, the, the uh, parking would go, and then thinking about how we present and what face we face to the community, a, what we're calling a public green on the east side of the site. And that's what we would really see on Bayside Road. Um, on the bottom left is an implementation diagram of how we start to integrate the 
the actual program of the site, the drop off areas, the, the playgrounds, the play fields onto that diagram. And to the right is the, our final preliminary result of that site plan. And uh, I'll, I'll just briefly walk you through it. Um, on, the, on the northeast corner at Bayside Road, uh, you can see that there's the current ingress egress of the parking lot. And that will create our new drop off loop as well as access to the parking. Uh, it was important to reuse that existing ingress egress point. And as well as that, it was very important for us to create a safe condition out on Bayside Road. Uh, many of you who know the, the region we crest a hill to the north of us and to not have buses stopping traffic or cars poking out onto Bayside Road uh, as they're waiting to come in or out. For that reason, having a long neck of a drop off zone means that we have a great deal of stacking on the on the site without having anybody back out onto Bayside Road. As you get onto the site, you can see a circulation pattern of sidewalks, both formal and informal. Our goal is that one day when this the sidewalk connections, which you can see occur at every connection of our site at the northeast, the southeast and the southwest, um, that once there is the uh, the future safe route to school project completely installed once that's funded and ultimately uh, connected that our school site and sidewalk system connect directly to that system as well. Once on site, you can see that a pedestrian will never cross traffic between where they get onto site and when they actually get to the front door of the school. Uh, so that means whether you, you enter at the corner of Old Bayside and Bayside, you can walk through the, between the bus loop and the drop off or whether you come in from the Northeast, you'll walk along this green zone through this paved pathway. Um, and likewise on the Southwest corner as well, you'll never cross these circulation patterns that are really busy, dangerous thing for young students to cross uh, both in morning and drop off situations. Um, you can see on Old Bayside Road that what we're trying to present on the front on the east side is a park. Uh, we're going to retain the existing tennis courts, many of the existing trees uh, we're trying to retain in that area, those, those beautiful large trees, because that's part of that, that feeling, that ecosystem, uh, and that small town charm that we have. Additional play areas and play fields in the front, and then those all will then buffer that, that uh, parking area, which addresses the front area of the school and the student drop-off area. Likewise, along the entire south edge of the building, we're, we're planning to implement a green buffer zone between the bus loop and Old Bayside Road, as well as between the building and Old Bayside Road. And this is much of a buffer for the street, as well as uh, a nod in respect to our neighbors across the street to really uh, separate the school facility from what is that residential community on the other side. Um, once we get to the building, the administration component of the building is proudly located on the southeast corner. And this is very strategic from a security standpoint. From this position and also higher, slightly higher in topography, which I'll talk about in a little bit, the administration can surveil Old Bayside Road, can surveil anyone coming in from the parking lot and out to the entire front zone of the building, the play fields, the tennis courts. Um, anyone who comes to this building will be seen by the administration before they reach that front door. Uh, and that's a major security and safety uh, measure that we're implementing in the school. Um, once in the building, on the west side of the building will be the gym and the cafeteria. And you can see how those relate to the outdoor play areas that are a little bit more private because they're protected for school day use uh, from the public side of the building. Uh, as a result of those tight constraints, that small buildable area, we're also challenged with how do we get the large program of this school, uh, now roughly 70,000 square foot of program onto this very small footprint of a site. And to do so, uh, we resulted in a three-story solution. Um, and here you see a kind of a diagrammatic graphic of that three-story solution, which offered us a lot of interesting opportunities, particularly in this location and on this site. One that we noticed very early in the process, particularly when we were surveying the roof of the existing building, is that as you get higher in elevation, and this building is slightly higher than in elevation than the existing building, uh, particularly in the winter, we're, we're, we can see the bay. Uh, so imagine the ecological pedagogy that the school can implement, and they're so connected to the, to the, to the neighboring nature. Uh, and they walk down there and they, and, they, and they include that in part of their educational program 
to be able to see that from the school is just an opportunity that, that very few schools will ever have. Uh, so those opportunities to take advantage of that vertical nature to, to do that is a great uh, aspect of, of what will be the Peach Elementary School. Other natural components and uh, sustainable components also play in. We currently have a 55,000 sprawling, square foot sprawling one story building. Our new building, although it's 70,000 square feet in program, is now only 45,000 square feet in footprint. So we've reduced the impervious area, which is a very sustainable move uh, of the existing building. And by condensing the building into a smaller envelope, because it's three stories, we also have less surface area to heat and cool. So we're gonna lose less and have less solar heat gain uh, in our building as well. So this really played into our sustainable approach, which is also a vision of that 2040 plan uh, that, we, that you've shared with us. Um, another idea that the, the stakeholder group really appreciated was the kind of the vision of the lighthouse, the nautical metaphor that is so prevalent throughout uh, the town of Chesapeake Beach and, and its surrounding areas. And the idea of this lighthouse of a school and, and what that could do for the excitement that it brings to students who come to Beach Elementary School. Uh, as many of you know the site or have walked the site, it continues to rise as we move from east to west. Uh, this offered us some interesting opportunities and challenges within the building as well. And you can see here that as it steps up from east to west along its section, that the school building itself will also follow that site footprint and move up through the school, uh, through the site as you go from east to west. I want to share a little bit about the, the 21st century learning idea that was so important to uh, the stakeholder group as well. Uh, not only was safety and security a major player, but now that we're building this three-story elementary school, how do we start to bring collaboration spaces, bring the kind of learning that students are going to be doing in the future, but also create spaces that address the different learning needs of different types of learners. So many learners learn best in an authoritative situation when they're three to one to a teacher. Some students learn best when they can go off by themselves in a quiet area and read a book. Some students work, learn better when they can collaborate in a small group, whether that be in what we're calling the CLA, which is a collaborative learning area, or a quiet area like a resource room or a flex room, not necessarily in a large classroom of 24, 25 students all facing a chalkboard or a marker board. So the plan really sought to seek opportunities to provide different types of spaces that offer every learner different types of learning environments. Uh, and, and integrating that with those views, as we see here in this uh, collaborative learning perspective, um, out to that environment was, an, was a, just a great opportunity that the stakeholder group we got to take advantage of in this project. Um, moving back to our site and, and the implementation of that, we want to be sure to be extremely respectful to our neighbor. Uh, and here you see a section through the site going east to west. Um, one of our challenges, of course, is how do you design a three-story elementary school? Um, and, and how do you design any elementary school, I'll say, in a community? And most all, mostly all elementary schools are in neighborhoods and not overwhelm that neighborhood. So we've implemented a lot of strategies in our design process to do so. Uh, we see here in that section the way Old Bayside Road rises as we move to the tallest parts of our building. In fact, the, the, the ground plane at Old Bayside Road, where it hits that part of the building, will actually be higher than the ground plane of the school, which means the school will kind of sink into that topography a little bit. On the top right, you can see an image looking up at Old Bayside Road. Uh, you can see how the road rises in the distance and how the school, particularly buffered by that green buffer, which I spoke about earlier in the presentation, really doesn't overwhelm the adjacent properties. Uh, across the street. They're, they're much more prominent as you see them on the left side of the screen. Um, so in the diagram down below, you can see that green buffer zone and how effective that is in bringing the topography down to the school. And you can see the one thing that kind of does overwhelm the site, and that's the water tower in the back of the site. And that's, we really never can challenge that for height and, uh, and uh, what is the prominent feature uh, vertically on that site. Uh, here are images of across the street. Uh, two, three, and four are the houses across the street. Some of those do sit even higher 
to topographically, so they will sit even prouder than the school vertically. Uh, and I want to bring your attention also to image one on the top left. That is the daycare facility that is northeast of the school. And I want to point out also that that daycare facility, which on this large view here, is on the right side of the screen. Here you can see that by having that building, even though it's a one-story building, so much higher in topography than our school, than our school, the ridge line of our taller building really doesn't compete visually with the ridge line of that adjacent building. Also in this image, we can see the ingress and egress to the parking lot and uh, parent drop-off. And we can see that by setting the school building back further, we've achieved a number of goals. One is to still provide the prominence and the clarity that this is a school and it's a, it's a welcoming 21st century facility, but also the presentation of this parkland uh, in front of the building rather than a parking lot, which was one of our objectives in the original diagram when we started laying out the, the idea of the school. And again, on the left, the way the building is not overwhelming on Old Bayside Road as well was one of our goals. Moving into the uh, building itself and the idea of building an interconnected town and developing the vibrancy of the community. And a lot of that for us in the way that our stakeholder group interpreted that goal is how can we bring amenity to the building and inter interconnect with the, with the town. So amenities can occur in a number of ways. Uh, the tennis courts, the play fields that are on the, on the public green side of the school, not just the private play fields on the back side of the school, are all part of providing some of that amenity and, and uh, community use functions of the town. Uh, others are the way we connect on a vehicle standpoint. So I talked a little bit earlier about the connection on the northeast of the site for vehicle traffic and the way that that is not going to it's going to create a long neck for stacking so nobody's ever uh, sticking out on old base on bayside road uh, where traffic is moving north and south likewise on the on the south side of our site on old bayside road we're going to eliminate one of the three ingresses that are currently used for the buses and create a bus loop in which eight buses can stack nose to tail which is the preferred method uh, for calvert county public schools in a way that it's far enough from the old Bayside Road that we can create a green buffer and that we can create an appropriate turning radius. So that bus is hitting old Bayside Road at a 90 degree angle uh, when, when buses ingress and egress between the, uh, the road and the bus loop. So that creates the most safe environment for both traffic and uh, the bus traffic on old Bayside Road and the buses. We will be seeking to add a new ingress for service on the west side of the building, and that's just for the deliveries to the uh, kitchen and for the school uh, on the west side of the site. On the bottom left side, you can see a diagram of those circulation patterns. And you can see the major, the darkest color there are the vehicle circulation patterns. You can also see an interweaving idea of uh, sidewalks and pathways some of which are very primary. The very straight pathways are the ones where they take you from the bus loop. The child, children will get right onto the sidewalk and go straight to the front door without ever crossing anything, another parent, another traffic or what have you. Likewise, the, the parent drop-off will get you on a very straight, very formal sidewalk that takes you right to the front door. Interwoven with that are the more playful articulated pathway systems that bring you to the corners of the site, cross you through the site uh, in, a, in a more park-like way, as well as connections down towards Fishing Creek uh, and, uh, and into the woodlands beyond uh, in a more uh, less formal uh, format. Uh, now these, these connections can also be made to the idea of the bicycle pathway system that is ultimately proposed throughout the town of Chesapeake Beach. Although uh, for the purposes of, uh, of delivery and circulation of students, it is Calvert County Public Schools policy to not uh, have students come to school on bike for safety reasons. So that's a, uh, something that we, we want to promote from a safety standpoint as well. Continuing to talk about the interconnected town and the amenity, in addition to the outdoor amenity, we are going to be including a number of community use programs in the school. And on the right side here, we can see a series of indoor community use aspects of the school adding to the vibrancy of the community. 
you can see uh, kind of on this diagram the size of the existing gym and the size of the existing cafeteria and how the size of the proposed really relate to the size of the existing. And this is done for two basic purposes. One is to have a much larger gym that can be used for community recreation programs. The other is to have a folding partition between the cafeteria and the gym. And you can see that the shape and arrangement of the cafeteria, its relationship to the gym, and the view cones uh, that can be created in this arrangement offer a really nice opportunity for public meetings, for uh, plays, for any kind of large group event that might want to occur at a place that might not exist right now in the town of Chesapeake Beach, but is an amenity that the school may be able to provide uh, in the future. Um, balancing with the environment is also one of our goals. The building will be designed to be a LEED Silver certified building. Uh, you can see on the top left diagram a couple of things. One is uh, that the long linear building that spans east to west gives us the ideal solar orientation. We present a broad face southbound and a broad face northbound. The northbound face can have as much glazing as it wants without really the, the concern of taking in extensive, extensive uh, solar heat gain. And on the south side, we can shade those windows horizontally to accomplish the same goals. Uh, likewise, the building will be outfitted for the future implementation of photovoltaics. So it may be able to generate its own energy, electric energy, uh, on the roof, uh, taking advantage of this solar orientation. Likewise, we want to take advantage of the local ecology and introduce stormwater management elements that will be integrated into our learning programs. So you can see the plans for outdoor classrooms and stormwater management facilities throughout the site, which will not only improve our sustainable footprint on our project, but will also be integrated as sustainability as part of that learning environment so that future residents, and as they grow up in Chesapeake Beach, will understand the value of the bay and, and keeping that clean and, and, the, um, and how those methods are done to accomplish those goals. So those are strewn throughout the site as identified on the diagrams uh, on this site, on this uh, slide. Um, Preserving that small town charm is also a concept that we had a lot of uh, effort into. In addition to a lot of the moves that I talked about previously, the way the facades of this building are broken down, um, both by shadow and recesses in the facade, changes of materials that break down the volume so this doesn't feel like a large building, as well as what we call uh, local symmetries. So the way the win windows are arranged if you could imagine if one were to lay out windows in a regular rhythm across the entire building, you would get kind of an office building effect where, where it's very regularized and you feel it all as one large component. But, but by creating what we're calling local symmetries in these areas, we create little se sections of windows that are a, at a much smaller scale. We start to bring, break down that scale of that building even further. So a lot of the techniques we use in the architecture really break that building down so that it doesn't overwhelm uh, any adjacent properties. And what we hope to present is a building that really has a sense of pride, has a sense of pride of its location, a sense of pride for uh, the nautical nature of the architecture uh, around it and, and really gives this building what it should have always been. It's what's long overdue for the project. Uh, here we see some images of how we see that same elevation uh, in a three-dimensional format. And we're just getting to the point where we're starting to take that massing and starting to articulate that with a series of materials. And we're, I'm, we'll just share with you some of our thoughts uh, as we're starting this process. One is what we call our landscape palette. It's a palette that seeks to take colors, textures, and materiality from the surrounding landscape and have the building blend a little bit more into its adjacent uh, ecology. And the other is what we call the lighthouse palette internally. And it's one that starts to address more of the nautical based architecture that is prevalent throughout the downtown area. You see some of those images around here. So as we're just starting to pick materials, we wanted to, to let you have a little bit of an insight of how we go about um, taking inspiration from, from the local components to develop that design uh, and, and the materiality and selections that we have there. Uh, and one last thing that I'll share with you, 
I did share all of the building setbacks and all of the uh, environmental concerns and setbacks that surround our project and really limit the area of the building. We will also be doing a slight disturbance to what's called the expanded critical buffer area. Uh, so we'll be working with you as the town as well as the critical area commission to share what we'll be doing in those areas. Um, and some of those impacts are actually to correct uh, and repair some of the eroded uh, storm outfalls as you see here in diagram A. And some are just to straighten out some topography lines uh, where we get back into the steeper areas, not the steeper areas, but on the west side, just to give us enough room to provide all those play fields and play areas for the school. Uh, so that, that really concludes my presentation. Happy to answer any questions, take any input. Uh, again, it's been a very involved stakeholder process and we consider you a stakeholder in our group as well. So uh, with that, I hope I conveyed the excitement of the group and uh, happy to answer any questions and take any comments. Well, thank you very much, Ram. Um, I think uh, this is kind of awkward in this Zoom environment we're in. So I will uh, maybe go down each of the commissioners and ask them for their thoughts or comments. Uh, Lori, would you like to go first? Sure, I'd love to. Um, I thought that was a great presentation. And from my standpoint, I really appreciate how you have incorporated um, the town's walkable community advisory group plans. And um, you've thought about our amenities and the town's use of the property, as well as tying in the, um, you know, our natural environment to the children's learning experience. And I, I just think you've done a really good job thinking of all these things and incorporating them into your plan. So um, I think it's great. I love it. Cindy, would you like to uh, come uh, up? I've got several uh, questions. The first one is, um, Ron, did you mm -hmm. guys consider, and as a former teacher and parent, uh, whatever, the concern I have is on your egress out of the building, you have uh, basically just open sidewalk and it looks like some landscaping, some maybe some hardscape, but I don't see any kind of an overhang that would protect kids as they're going into the buses. And as a teacher, I was a teacher for 20 years, I will tell you that that is a really significant issue that you have kids out there waiting for buses that may or may not have shown up. You see right there as you go out from the entrance and there's a walkway out, well, that doesn't really show it too well. But uh, right from the main entrance, uh, you should have some kind of an overhang that goes out into the uh, bus pickup area so that kids aren't sitting out there getting rained on, snowed on, have umbrellas they're beating each other up with, et cetera. So I think that is an issue that is, sounds small, but it's really significant when it comes to the beginning and ending of a day mm -hmm. to have kids somewhat dry. So I would recommend that you think about some, I know it may not aesthetically go into your, uh, your plans there, but uh, I think the practicality of having kids safe and healthy is an important issue here. And maybe has been overlooked perhaps in that particular situation, but people have to wait for buses. And, you know, and then, and then when you've got the playground being used as maybe a field for maybe uh, the lower end softball, baseball, whatever, you're gonna have people, you know, wanting to get out of cars and whatnot. So I'm thinking some overhangs really might be, especially in the, in the entrance right there by the buses, I really think an overhang is necessary. That's my opinion. Um, Can have I you ever considered that, that, Ron? Has that been a consideration? I don't see that yeah, on yeah, any plans. I, I may have yeah, overlooked I, it. I can't talk to that. No, it's no problem at all. And uh, it Ron, was a, I can also talk to it. This is Mike. Hey, Mike, go ahead. All right, um, just for your information, um, our practice has been for years, let's say decades, that we don't dismiss kids to go out and wait for buses. Um, when buses um, arrive in the morning, they usually come in one, two, uh, at most uh, three pairs. Uh, we we um, dismiss those buses into the building, the kids walk straight in. At dismissal time, we do not call students for a bus until it has arrived at the front. Um, and again, so that's dismissing by pairs of buses um, and they go directly to their buses. If the weather is bad, 
uh, the drivers can, can pull up, you know, right close to the entrance and the kids can go right from the entrance into onto their bus. So there's no um, waiting for buses outdoors, um, either in the morning um, or waiting to come into the building or in the evening when they're being dismissed. And um, with car riders, again, what we've been able to do, and I think this design also adds to it, is the fact that we can dismiss car riders from one location and um, the buses, the students ride buses from a separate location so they don't mix and the traffic doesn't mix. Um, so that's why I, I think just using the- uh, Okay, design. now, all right, now let's go back to grouping the kids in an audit in a hallway or an auditorium situation. Mm -hmm. um, in the era of viruses and COVID, which we're gonna have probably for a while, and we've gotta recognize that as a potential issue. Is there any way to not have them all grouped together, but be able to dismiss them and not have them congregated in such a small area to be able to get onto the bus? I'm just trying to think of spreading kids out more. That's also um, what we're thinking about now as we plan for this upcoming school year and hopefully the transition from virtual learning back to face-to-face uh, -face learning. Um, it's gonna be spreading kids out and maybe having only 50% of the population in on certain days, AB days is a term that's being used a lot. Um, so that cuts down the, the in-house population. Uh, that's something that we'll be uh, going through this year. And since this is a, uh, a two-year project before the building's actually finished, at least, we're going to have uh, plenty of time to, to work out those kinks as, as to how we do with health issues and keeping kids distant from each other as needed. Okay. It just seems like a little bit more outdoor covered area might help. But that's my, I've been in schools where they've had those and it's really been a help to not have to kid, have kids all grouped inside, but that's my experience. Um, the other question I have is, uh, now are you redoing all the fencing around the front of it as well? You know, there's fencing around the, the tennis courts, et cetera. Are you gonna redo all that fencing or is that remaining? Uh, we can look at the fencing around the tennis court. and get That's back technically to something that belongs to Parks and Recreation. And if that's something they want to upgrade as they do the tennis courts from time to time, that's going to be coming out of their, their funding. Okay, so the tennis courts will become parks and, or is parks and recreation? They are parks and rec, yes. Okay, they are parks and rec. Oh, okay, okay, got it. Then. And also then the sidewalks that you're going to be uh, incorporating along the uh, north side, uh, as well as around the, the south and, and west side, uh, east side, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, how, what width are those sidewalks approximately? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Esther, do you want to, Esther, do you want to chime in on that? Yeah, sure. Hi, uh, this is Esther Fosifone. I'm the landscape architect. Um, I was part of the team to work on the circulation. So we have a hierarchy of the pathways, main pathways, secondary and tertiary. So as you see, the main pathway coming out of the uh, building entrance, east-west direction, um, that is... 10 foot wide on both sides and a planting strip in between. And then the rest of the pathways you see around the site, which is along Bayside Road, Bayside Road Old Bayside Road, um, and then on the back, uh, those are about five feet, um, five feet wide. And then also the other pathway right along the building um, going north-south exit, that's also 10 foot wide. Okay. Yeah, right there. Good, 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 okay. Um, all right, and I guess uh, the only other question I, I have is, um, are you then, you're also gonna redo a sign, I guess, the signage is gonna be changed as well in this project, is that part of a pro, uh, part of the plan as well? I would anticipate, uh, yes. This is, this is Suchita, I can, I can chime in on that. Um, typically, as far as the uh, school sign goes, what we um, what we normally do is um, that is uh, typically a fundraising uh, item with the with the PTA or PTSO. Um, we'll certainly take a look at what we can afford as part of the project, um, but that's our typical practice for the school sign for the marquee sign. That's a pretty old sign. It looks like it really needs to be replaced. So I was hoping that would be part of the project is replacing that sign too. But uh, And then it says in the plans that you're gonna be uh, removing a minimal amount of the forest and a very few of the trees. I assume that you're only gonna take out the trees that 
uh, that will, you know, be impacted by the new building. Uh, there aren't a lot of trees, though. It seems like that's going to be mostly playground. Right. Um, now, your new playgrounds, which you didn't discuss, I assume <laughs> they will be open to the public as well? During non-school hours, yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, the reason why I asked is because not every school keeps them open and they lock up their fences. Um, okay, and they're gonna, and the only group of playground ish, um, uh, equipment is gonna be in the very back, on the very east, uh, west side of the project. Is that it? That is correct. Okay, so you don't have a smaller group for the preschool? Um... Uh, they, they, those playgrounds are segregated into two to five year group playground and then a five to 12 year old playground. Uh, but oh, they it's all, all in do. one area. Okay, Correct. it's all in one area. I got it. Okay, very good. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good presentation. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate the question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Jonathan. Hi, hey guys. Uh, I'd like to say that you guys, I think you guys did a great job. The school looks awesome. Uh, I have two little ones myself, and it's an exciting project to, uh, to see them grow up in that school. Uh, I just have two questions. One was, uh, maybe going into a little more detail on how the uh, Fishing Creek Trail might connect to the school. Um, I saw one page that had kind of a uh, little bit of a drawing on that, but I was wondering what the, uh, how we would implement or plan that maybe. I know it exists. I talked about it. <laughs> there, it there it is. Um, That's something that we're still investigating too. Uh, we know that there's the idea to eventually connect down a pathway uh, that we chatted with Chris about to the boardwalk area that's down at Fishing Creek. So we, we identified that in kind of this dot fashion to be more of a um, nature trail rather than a paved pathway. We don't intend to pave down through the wooded area. Okay. Uh, but that's something that's still under, under investigation. There is, as you very well know, some significant topography to overcome as we move downhill towards the, through, through essentially what is a ravine. Yeah, and to provide some history with that, um, the nature trail that we've had over the year has been um, a culmination of different Eagle Scout projects. Uh, scouts, di different scouts did different sections of it, whether it was uh, boardwalk, whether it was trail clearing, whether it was steps. Um, so. And fr frankly, the nature trail is falling into a lack of use probably in the last uh, eight to 10 years. But with the, this project coming in, um, it would provide an opportunity again for scouts who want to do projects like that, um, that we would be prime customers if they want to uh, earn their Eagle badge by doing an improvement to our nature trail. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just, I think that would be a great uh, addition and it would help cut down on traffic and give the kids a, uh, alternate route from uh, those neighborhoods over there. And uh, the other question I had is the possibility of a dog park. Would that, would that be an option to, to fit into this anywhere? Uh, this is Suchita. No, we, we do not have that in our program. Um, and, and to be quite honest with you, we're trying to fit quite a bit of program on this already tight site anyway, um, but that would not be um, something that, that we feel that we have any kind of room for. Um, so that's, that's not really something that's being considered. Okay, uh, hopefully. We now again, we, we've got a nine acre site and these, and Ron and company have done a, in my opinion, uh, it's, a, it's an, a fantastic job in the two year process we've been working with them. Every time we see what they're thinking, um, they they raise raise their um, their game a notch or several notches. So nine acres goes pretty quickly, as you can see by these series of designs. And yeah. we're making um, the school site much more accessible to the town and community by the things that are going in in front. And by uh, a prime example is maintaining those uh, the space for those tennis courts. We've had several calls, emails about folks who want to know if they're going to be part of the plans, and you can see that they are. So um, I, I think we're trying to accommodate um, 
quite a bit of the community interest and I'm, I'm afraid a dog park is not on the list right now. I think that's going to be something that may, maybe goes back to you folks and convincing the town council to find a, a way to pull off a dog, uh, dog park. Okay, understood. Thank you for that uh, feedback. I thank you thank guys. You, Dr. Dr. Really for good yep. Much appreciated. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Jeff. <clears throat> Jeff Larson. Hello, Jeff. All right, I can move along to Kathleen. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask? Yes, um, I do. Uh, first of all, it, obviously, Beach Elementary is very historic. Uh, I mean, it's been around 67 years, and if you talk to most people, uh, they 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 still remember their teacher, their their children. Mm -hmm. Children are now going there, so uh, I, it's a very important. Uh, part of the community for sure. And uh, I, I think that it, it was a great presentation. Um, uh, and I also think that it's very reflective of the community, the, the lighthouse, um, you know, uh, my house as well. I have a cupola that kind of reflects the Northeast uh, Community Center. Of course, it's Italian cupola means uh, it's Italian for very expensive and no real purpose at my home, but it, it does reflect that. Um, but I just want to say, um, I noticed it. There's part of this project is the uh, the LEED Silver certification, which I think is is very important. How? What's the status of that? And because uh, I know normally in in buildings, it's very it's a very costly endeavor. And um, I I just wanted I was curious about that. Sure. So we've already had a series of what we call uh, green charrettes which we do early on in the process to target and identify opportunities for sustainable design that can be incorporated or that can uh, naturally be addressed on our site. So things like I shared some stormwater management, some uh, ideas with regards to the solar orientation and how that can be taken advantage of uh, not only to get the right types of heating and cooling uh, impacts to the building, but also develop situations where we can use natural lighting and reduce the, the lighting load to the building. So we have had those series of green charrettes and we've identified our, what we call our lead scorecard. And throughout the entire process, we maintain and update the scorecard regularly. And the scorecard has three columns for every point that's available. And that is a yes, maybe, and a no. Uh, and currently we are, in order to make the lead silver criteria, we need to make 50 points in the yes category. So currently we are tracking at 51 points in the yes category with another great many in the maybe category as well. So we do have some uh, additional ones that we can implement in the event that we don't make one of the points that we're anticipating. But to be at that 51 point level this early in the process is a very good sign. So we're tracking quite well towards our goal of LEED Silver, silver Certification. Excellent. Um, and my, my other question is, uh, you were talking about the community use of the school in the mm -hmm. evening. And I right. guess I'm, I'm wondering how much that's been a factor now, and especially as we move into the COVID and uh, security. Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine that also has a fiscal component for the schools because obviously people have to be on site to mm -hmm. let people use the uh, use the building. And I just wanted to, I was just curious as to will this be greater use than currently is at Beach Elementary or is it similar? So I'll, I'll address the design component and then we can talk about the use. Uh, as you can see, the community use functions that we call the public functions of the building um, are primarily set on the west side of the building. So the gym and the cafeteria. And in working with the stakeholder group, we have set this up to have its kind of own main entrance, you know, an opportunity to have a security component at that main entrance and control who comes in and out. We've even been able to implement a vestibule of its own uh, to create two lines of defense coming into the building. And both the east and the west wings of the building, the media center, if that gets used for evening use, or the west side, the gym and the cafeteria, can be separated by doors from the uh, instructional core of the building. So if someone comes to use the building in the evening and you're coming to, say, a play or a community event or coming to a basketball 
uh, use the basketball court in the gym for a community function, uh, I'll share with you that these doors have now been moved further to the west. You'll come into this controlled vestibule, a small lobby, and you'll be completely controlled outside of the building, the school building. So the school educational spaces are completely uh, separated and, and segregated off from where the public would have access to in evening use. Uh, so that's a school uh, security and use function separating those what we call private and public spaces. With regards to use, and I'm sure Dr. Schistler can talk a little bit more about this, I think one of the diagrams that's very relevant is the, the size of the existing spaces uh, that are publicly accessible spaces today compared to what they will be. And you can see here the size of the existing gym relative to the gym that we will be implementing in this project. And that's specifically to address that community use. So a, a full-size basketball court as opposed to what you would see in a small elementary school gym can be incorporated in this footprint. And likewise, the, the, the size of the existing cafeteria, which no longer has a stage area, it's been converted to storage uh, to serve the need of the school, you can see that wow. small space and what the size of this space will be when, when the uh, auditorium wall is closed and what that can really accomplish once that entire space is open as a community amenity as well. So uh, I, I would say quite a bit of thought went into how the community might use the building in the evening uh, during our design process. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you, when you hit safety and security. How do we keep those functions secure from the instructional private functions of the building as well. Uh, and this is Suchita Warner. Um, I just wanted to say in terms of the use, uh, we do have a memorandum of understanding with Parks and Rec. We did oversize the gym to be able to accommodate um, some more usage that the park that Parks and Rec would like to, to see within the building. So we do see that the uh, usage would likely go up um, and and typically um, gymnasiums are are what do get used but certainly as as Ron indicated with the size of the cafeteria and the stage and the opportunity for the cafeteria and gym to act as one space um, through that partition I think would allow for a lot more flexibility and usage um, by the community as well. This is Mike again. Our, our community usage has been, um, I guess, uh, varied over the course of the years, but a, a key partner again, is, as Shichita said, is Parks and Rec. So when there are evening Parks and Rec programs, again, they, they've kind of dwindled over the years because when the Northeast Center came on and other schools came on, uh, they found better locations than Beach Elementary School to have, have a basketball practice or, or let alone basketball games. Um, the Parks and Rec, if we have evening activities, they would provide the staffing to, uh, to admit and to, to monitor whoever comes in and uses the gym. Um, with, as you've seen the views of the combined cafeteria and, and gym, that's gonna really open the door for um, a variety of programs. I mean, over the course of the years, again, we've had some uh, local homeowners associations would come in occasionally to have their annual meetings. Again, as the years went by, they found better, more, convenient places in our cafeteria, but this might attract those folks again. Uh, I'm not making any promises, but maybe the Twin Beach players and the, especially the kids, kids troop might find our new stage and cafeteria co gym combo a great place to do some of their plays that they put on throughout the year. So, and I'm sure other groups working with the library might find um, uh, the new environment here a, a, an ideal spot to hold some of their programs might also add that in addition to just oversizing the gym, uh, the program also includes an office and separate storage area for community use spaces. So to be shared with rec and parks or whoever uh, is uh, administering those, those after hours programs. Can I, have, uh, can I ask a question about, now if they're using that gym, and I know they use it now for pickleball and a few other things after, you know, when it gets dark, is there a way to enter on the north side of the gym or do you have to walk all the way from the parking lot all the way around to the south side into that little atrium area? How would you, how would you open that up at night for these, you know, let's say in the wintertime when they have pickleball at whatever? So typically uh, we like to control entry 
from a security standpoint to one point. Uh, the south side entry does face Old Bayside Road. Uh, right. So I think that's actually the more prominent of the entries. And once you enter through that vestibule sequence, you're in the lobby that enters right into the gym uh, directly. Okay. The other doors are available for egress, but my, my instinct is that from a security standpoint, it would be preferred that everyone come in through the south side. And that's so, completely accessible through the sidewalk system. So I assume there's going to be lighting all the way around that sidewalk so that people can walk all the way around. Is that how, I mean, I'm assuming you're going to put lighting all the way around there uh, for nighttime use? Well, I think we'll, we're, that study has yet to occur. The, we're going to, lighting is a challenge from a number of standpoints. One, we have to light it to be secure. So whether that's site lighting or wall packs, the other is environmental impact of lighting. Um, and right. And so we, we haven't gotten to the point where we've done those studies yet, but that will come down in the future. Security in schools is a prominent part of our process. I can assure you of that. Hey, uh, can we uh, go back to Commissioner Larson? Are you available to uh, talk? I can see you, Jeff. Well, I can see your lips moving, but I can't hear you. Okay, well, we lost uh, the audio for Ms. Larson. You can hear us, is that correct, Jeff? Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a large, uh, it looks like, uh, public participation. I count 36 people total attending tonight. Uh, are there any members of the public that would like to uh, uh, comment or ask questions? Okay, all right, well, hearing none, I, uh, uh, I guess I had a couple of questions. The uh, 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 access off the uh, Bayside Road uh, today, I'm, I don't have any young children, so I, I'm not familiar with how it works today, but do they, uh, can private vehicles uh, pick up their children on Mears Avenue? Is that common or do they have to turn uh, at the um, road to the north of that to enter and pick up the children. So currently, uh, parents who enter on that northeast corner on Bayside Road typically park and walk to pick up their children or pick up in the parking lot. Um, our goal is a much uh, safer and streamlined, more streamlined process where parents will drive in along this driveway and the idea of that wider 10 foot sidewalk that Esther talked about uh, earlier allows you to drive all the way to the, uh, almost to the front door and pick up or drop off onto, directly onto that sidewalk. So parents won't necessarily need to park and walk to the school. Um, although there is plenty of plaza area where the public can congregate. The idea here is whether it's parents walking or children walking with their parents, that no one crosses traffic going from the car to the door or vice versa. Uh, so this will be a much more, much different approach than what currently exists, but a much safer and st more streamlined approach is the intent. In the, uh, the current configuration, the, I guess it's uh, uh, parents and teachers have a parking lot off Old Bayside Road. Correct. Uh, so in effect, we'll be decreasing uh, the traffic on Old Bayside Road um, and possibly increasing it on the uh, northeast corner. I'm sorry, you're fading. We can't hear your whole question. You'll, you'll be decreasing because the parking mm -hmm. lot has moved uh, north and doesn't you know, no longer. Uh, enters off Old Bayside Road, you won't have that uh, automobile traffic on Old Bayside Road. It'll be up uh, to the north of that. That's correct. So uh, uh, the residents off Old Bayside Road might appreciate that. The, um, but it might, uh, I mean, that looks like a rather large parking lot on the north side of the, the property. Um, Wonder if it's one time we won't need a stoplight or something on uh, Bayside Road. 
uh, with the amount of uh, automobiles entering and leaving. Um, that's a traffic problem mm -hmm. or issue. Um, they, during construction, this is the construction will take what two years ish? About? Yes, roughly, yes. Um, That's correct. Where, where is the laydown area for materials and stuff? Uh, we anticipate the laydown area will be on the, on the screen on the west end of the site where the current field is. And then that will be restored at the end of the project. So we'll, we anticipate working our way out from the west edge of the site, eastbound towards the current building. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you have this all figured out. You've talked about it in the your plan about stormwater runoff that I think about uh, with Mears, uh, old Mears Road, Old Bayside Road, seven and a half feet above the uh, new building, you'll have uh, runoff down towards the building Yes. Um, I would hope that you have a uh, stormwater plans for that to uh, keep from flooding your building. Absolutely. Uh, and we're also taking advantage of the fact that the new building, unlike the existing building, is, is higher on the site than where the existing building is right now. Um, and there, uh, we have on online Joe Kajeski, our civil engineer from COA. We're working both on topography, and uh, I kind of talked a little bit about how our building steps up uh, with the topography to kind of keep up with topography so that we're not having a hill go down into our building. Uh, so between that, swales, and our stormwater management approach around the entire site, uh, we anticipate being able to address those concerns. Okay, thank you. The uh, last question I had, I, I was looking for the library on the new building. Is that also oh. the me media center? That is the media center. So this front northeast corner is the media center. Uh, and as you'll see on that site plan, that media center and the art room adjacent to it open out to this outdoor classroom area and outdoor learning environments, which were kind of important discussion points that we had with the stakeholder group as an amenity to the building. Okay, is there anyone else with uh, comments they'd like to make? Mr. Chairman, I would. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to call to the attention of the planning commissioners um, what we heard tonight relative to the Fishing Creek Trail. Now, you know that's been on the town's master plan for 20 years to connect the trail directly to the school so that students could walk to Beach Elementary School from essentially all neighborhoods uh, in uh, Chesapeake Beach, including Richfield Station and Bayview Hills, the Heritage, these subdivisions that are quite some distance away. Um, so it's been on the plan for a considerable period of time. Um, my concern is what I heard tonight is that this project is not going to comply with the comprehensive plan in this respect. Uh, and um, what we heard was that there may be a nature trail that could be constructed by the Boy Scouts. And, um, but that is not what the plan calls for. Uh, we're not, the plans here do not show that nature trail even connecting off site into the town's trail network. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, my concern is we move forward with this project, we've lost an opportunity to implement one of the most central parts of the 2002 comprehensive plan, that being connecting the school to the rest of the town through this recreational trail system. I just want you to be aware of that. And if you have reservations about that, now is the time to bring that up, uh, uh, at least in comments, so that the applicants can respond to it before coming back to your final uh, site plan approval meeting. Uh, the Board of Appeals will have to evaluate this project against the comprehensive plan and that will certainly be an item that I will ask the Board of Appeals to evaluate um, as well. But I wanted to lay that out for you um, in many respects to follow up on uh, Jonathan's uh, smart comments about this, this project. I'd like to address that if, if I can for a moment. Please. Yeah, our, our district policy has been that kids 
um, either ride buses to school or they're brought to school by their parents, car riders. Um, for safety reasons, long before we had the serious safety reasons that we've had in the last decade, um, we told parents we did not want to have any walkers to school, even if they live right across the street. So everybody comes by bus or everybody comes by car. And if you, um, I understand the, the importance of connecting to the, the town's Fishing Creek Trail system, but if you think about that, that walk um, from one of those neighborhoods um, off of Cox Road down into the town to the Fishing Creek Trail and then up, up towards school, that's, that's quite a trek. And I don't think we're in a time or we'll be in a time where we want kids walking by themselves, you know, to and from school that, that length of, length of a, a distance. So again, our, our school district's policy, our board's policy, transportation's policy is that everybody rides a bus. And if you're not riding a bus, you're a car rider. Um, and that's for safety reasons. And, and that's one important functional element uh, we have to consider. But the town's planning has recognized that this school site is a major civic location within the town's um, framework. It's a major institution. And it also provides, fortunately, one of the one of the relatively few open space and park amenities. And uh, so even the latest citizen um, uh, uh, sidewalk and walkability committee has uh, prepared a plan that shows connecting the school uh, to that Fishing Creek Trail. And, and yeah, not only for connecting students, but connecting it into the larger framework of the town, making the town truly pedestrian, accessible and friendly. Right, and we, we could see an advantage to that because we have activities, of course, they've been put on hold for the last four and a half months, but we have activities where our, our uh, different grade levels go down to Fishing Creek, go down to the trail, right. just like they also go down to, Bay, to Bayfront Park. Um, so having an access um, with your um, path system from school to Fishing Creek would be wonderful, um, but it's not something that we would be advertising or advocating that kids use every day. It would be when they're under the guidance of their, their you know, parents and teachers on walking field trips, um, not something we'd say for you know, walking to school in the morning or being dismissed in the afternoon. Yeah, Perhaps I for one would uh, not want to challenge the school's policy on that particular question. I think it's you know, well-reasoned. Um, and, and also it's worth pointing out that uh, I don't think anyone anticipates that this, the school board should fund the construction of this <laughs> trail connection to Fishing Creek. Um, but we don't want that opportunity to be foreclosed. Sure. Um, Constructing the trail has been a long-term effort by this, the town and it's made an incredible uh, benefit and improvement to the town, the, the sections that have been constructed. Um, and it takes many, many years to fund and uh, develop something like this. Uh, it would, speaking on behalf of the plan, it would um, be helpful if this plan at least embraced that vision uh, and indicated a clear willingness to incorporate it as part of the approval so that one day when we go back to look at uh, building this plan, we see that the school board had embraced it. And more so than just a, you know, a, a nature trail. So the description here describing nature trails is, is not what at all the town has long envisioned and or what I communicated to uh, the great architects and engineers I met with along the way. Well, well I, I can say that it's part of the project's idea to, to be open to embracing that, that vision. Uh, as you know, it's not in the project's budget to go off site and to create that on our own, right. but certainly um, to connect to what can future, what would be that interconnected pathway system in the future. So I, I don't think we, we have necessarily any op opposition to that and we'll be open to exploring that further and what that means to the work that we do on our site with our site plan. I also talked about, I think the, the connection to the sidewalk system and how we definitely wanna to connect to what it will be coming down the road uh, as that, um, <clears throat> future sidewalk program that will that will help to that walkable town idea that's being proposed. So 
I think it's the goal of our project to completely embrace that. I'm sorry that didn't come across uh, in the presentation, Chris. Rand, I really appreciate that. I'm, but still a little hesitant to hear you say that you think, and I, I understand maybe that you have to pull together the team and think through that. Um, um, but just, uh, I mean, the, it ultimately it's the planning commission here that will mm -hmm. have to follow up on that. But I, I needed to bring that to their attention. Sure. Chris, this is Suchita. I just want to kind of echo what, what Ron said. Um, and, and I think you can see from this um, uh, enlargement of, of uh, the image here that um, certainly we embrace the 2040 vision and, and we really um, believe in working with the town, um, especially in alignment with um, you know, the sidewalk connections that you're showing. Um, we're certainly um, wanting to, you know, promote um, being a, uh, a good neighbor to the town. Um, and, and as such, you can see that, you know, we've really tried to do what we can to uh, incorporate um, sidewalks along our uh, frontage of, of our property. Um, to be in line with, you know, any future projects that are going to be occurring in terms of the uh, safe routes to school. So certainly we can, we can continue to have conversations uh, about that. And, um, um, you know, I, I hope as I echo uh, Ron's sentiment that yes, we, we certainly want to be able to work with you guys, um, you know, in having that common vision. Um, hi, this is Laura. Can I speak for a second? Yes, go ahead, Laura. Um, so I, I wonder if maybe incorporating into the site plan some kind of official entrance to that um, trail system on the on the Fishing Creek side of the site, if that would be something that could be in the budget. Um, I think maybe that could be the good indicator that Chris was talking about, and of course, um, you know, there would be no expectation that the board would build those trails, but having something official, I think maybe is what Chris is getting at. Chris, you can correct me if you had a different idea, but just something, um, is there, do you see um, an opportunity for anything like that? Yeah, I think that's something the design team can explore. Absolutely. Okay. I'd also like to say realistically, if we're talking about con connecting the school property to the Fishing Creek area, then there's going to have to be a commitment, and I haven't seen one. I don't know if it's happened in the last, uh, you know, six to eight months. But there's going to be some other kind of a bridge across Fishing Creek to connect that side of the trail. You know, those those are some other parts that are going to have to be put in place before we can connect all the dots between uh, the Fishing Creek Trail and the school property. And I don't think we'll get a get a commitment from the board at any point in time to to start building beyond the nine, nine acre site that the school's located on. So Laura, to, to, to kind of echo in to what you were talking about in terms of an official entrance, you know, within our property that would at a future time connect to Fishing Creek, we can certainly look at that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You all do that. Say that. Okay. Uh, uh, someone's trying to talk, but I I can't hear them. Anybody else? Well, let um. Uh, the the uh, school board has presented this uh, as a. Uh, concept plan to us. Uh, I think for the most part we've gotten uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, a lot of favorable comments from the Commission. Um, do, does anyone want to propose a motion that we would send to the Board of Appeals uh, on this on this project? I, 
Uh, Larry, can you hear me? Oh, uh, who is that? Uh, Jonathan, I just had one more uh, quick question. Uh, pedestrian access coming from the south, that would be uh, mostly children walking from Chesapeake Village, I believe. Uh, I know they're talking about upgrading that sidewalk system, uh, but I'm guessing there would be some sort of crosswalk on Old Bayside Road right there, uh, the south side of Old Bayside, or east side, I should say. Uh, yeah, for I would anticipate that, definitely. Okay. Okay, if there's um, no further uh, discussion on this point, uh, uh, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Um, um, Mr. Chairman, the, the, the Board of Appeals has referred this to the Planning Commission to see if you would offer a recommendation. That's uh, per uh, the zoning code that says the Planning Commission provides recommendations to the Board of Appeals. Remember, this is a special exception. It's not a typical use you'd find in, uh, on a residential lot. And since it's zoned residential, uh, it becomes... Um, uh, incumbent upon the board of appeals to approve a special exception after a public hearing, and um, so they are asking for you to decide. And if your decision is not to offer a recommendation, that's clear too. But for the record, we need to know that. Okay. Well, um, then I will offer a motion that we recommend to the board of appeals that they approve the special exception use within the. Uh, uh, zoning district and grant the variance to exceed the 35 foot height limit in the zoning distance and grant the variance uh, for disturbance of the critical area. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a second. Um, can I maybe just go down because I can't see everybody. Um, uh, when we vote, uh, all in favor, Lori? Aye. Cindy? Aye. Jonathan? Aye. Uh, Kathleen? Aye. If I can see uh, uh, Jeff? Thumbs up. Jeff has a thumbs up. The board makes the recommend, the commission makes the recommendation that the uh, Board of Appeals approve the special uh, exemptions and 35 foot height limit and the disturbance uh, uh, request. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so moving on. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I thought that, personally, I thought the presentation was uh, very nice and uh, uh, the documents you provided uh, explained it very well, so. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. The next thing on our agenda was to review the new Chesapeake Beach Ethics Ordinance. This is uh, something that I've uh, thought about because in either January or February, the town council approved a new ethics ordinance. And when I exchanged some emails with the uh, uh, chairman of our ethics commission, he said there were some significant changes to the previous ordinance. And um, so I, I wanted to make sure you were all aware of that. And uh, I know that uh, Fran has distributed uh, electronically a copy of the ordinance. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to look through it. But I would add uh, the chairman of the ethics commission has agreed they have they have put together a training plan on the ethics ordinance. And he's agreed to come to our next meeting and do that training uh, for us. So rather than get into what the ordinance says, unless someone has some questions or some observations they'd like to make at this point, um, I think move on. Anyone have any comments? Okay, so the next thing on our agenda 
Uh, I had uh, asked everybody to take a look at the vision statement that uh, we published, the 2040 vision statement, and it's, uh, it's come to my attention that uh, there's a question about uh, the first sentence in paragraph three of the vision statement and a proposal to uh, change a couple of the words in that paragraph. Uh, Lori, would you like to discuss that? Do you have a copy of that uh, proposal? Uh, it's in the agenda, but I'll read uh, the vision in the vision statement. The third paragraph reads in embracing steady growth. It says slow re residential growth. You mean slow re residential growth? It says in embracing steady growth and renewal, we have guided residential and commercial development into ways that enrich the lives and experiences of town residents and visitors. And there's a proposal to change that to read in embracing slow mm -hmm. residential growth and focusing on developing recreational and commercial amenities, uh, etc. Um, is there any discussion of that? I think Lori should probably be the first one to talk about this. It's a big, I, I want to chime in, but I think I'd like to hear from Lori first, actually. Okay. Um, so I propose this nuanced change in response to a couple things. Um, the first thing being the survey that we put out from the town and, um, for the new for the new members of the commission, uh, almost two years ago, we had a uh, a town meeting, I guess, at the uh, near the water park, and uh, people formed into groups, and we did some uh, discussions about uh, the new future comprehensive plan, and we did a survey, and and then developed some information from that, and that's what uh, Lori is referring to. Thank you. Um, yes, so that is what I'm referring to. And um, the survey showed, and I, um, ugh, I guess I can hold it up. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work, but this is the survey. And so, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, so the blue line on the survey is where people answered that they preferred restricted and slow growth. Okay, if and you pull it a little further back from the camera, there'll be more light for people to, to see okay. it. A little, <laughs> a little closer, I'm sorry. Closer? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, <laughs> sorry. Um, so anyways, the longest line, if you can see it by okay. the length. Um, right, if the you wanna go ahead. Okay. The longest line represents that people indicated that they preferred Lori, if you want to continue. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Lori. Yes. Okay. Um, so the longest line on that survey question rep, um, indicated that people preferred that they, that people preferred they wanted restricted and slow growth. And then even below that, there was uh, quite a few people that also indicated that they preferred limited or stopped growth. And we're talking about residential growth on this question. Um, and those, the blue line alone um, that measures who wanted restricted and slow growth is the longest line on that survey. And then when coupled with people who wanted the limited or stopped growth, um, that is a, in my view, that indicates a majority of people would prefer that we slow down our residential. Um, and so, but people did indicate they wanted some, some commercial amenities, some restaurants, things like that, and um, things other than residential growth. And so I think that because we have some residential growth happening within our next 10 years. Um, we have a new neighborhood and we also have, I know North Calvert Woods isn't 
um, in Chesapeake Beach, but it will also contribute to the residential vitality of our area. We don't need during this comprehensive cycle to add residential growth. And in fact, there's really not that much space in Chesapeake Beach for additional construction. And so I think that that construction during this iteration uh, should be more focused on commercial growth, recreational opportunities, and the, and the like. Um, another mm -hmm. concern I have with overdeveloping residential growth is that we are in the, the a period of um, new projects coupled with a period of the COVID-19 phenomenon where we don't know what these new projects in Chesapeake Beach are going to do to our roads um, as far as traffic is concerned. And I think before we allow more residential growth, you know, such as major and minor um, residential units, I think we need to have the opportunity to view our road system in light of our new projects in a period of time when um, the, tra excuse me, the traffic flow is predictable. And for that reason, um, coupled with the idea that we should be respons responsive to our town citizens, I think that slow growth with a focus on uh, recreational opportunities and commercial amenities is the, the vision that we should be trying to implement this comprehensive cycle. And so that's why I propose the change and um, I'm interested to hear everybody's thoughts. So um, uh, let's go around the room, I guess. Um, Cindy, would you like to comment? Uh, my uh, my comment is that um, I told I completely understand where Lori's coming from. I'm concerned about putting uh, and I'm a real slow growther, so I really want to agree with her. On the other hand, uh, when you put in slow growth in a comprehensive plan, it's a real turnoff to any kind of commercial. It's kind of a, the antithesis of what you're really trying to accomplish because you say slow growth. Nobody's going to come in here and develop any recreational or commercial activities. So you've kind of bitten your, you know, shot yourself in the foot. Um, the reason why I think Chris might have put steady in there, uh, maybe we even said the word steady. I don't know. I, I like the word steady, but what I would like to say is steady and responsible growth in alignment with the current infrastructure. Because what happens is that you get the growth going out of sync with infrastructure and that's when we have a problem. But if you have the infrastructure in alignment and we've kind of come to the idea of what that means and you know that could mean that we see too many people stacking up at 260 to try and turn right or left or whatever. But I think we have to be cognizant of the idea that this is gonna be out for developers and for people who are wanting to start a business up. And if you say slow growth, nobody's going to want to come in here and do it. I would never want to put a business in here if it said slow growth. So um, I guess, and again, I don't want a lot of growth. I think where we're at is just lovely. This is why I bought in the town. I like the size, but I think you have to be somewhat reasonable in how we uh, uh, word this in this, uh, in this important paragraph. So I, again, steady and responsible growth in alignment with current infrastructure. I would like some kind of wording like that. So let me hear other comments. That's my opinion. Uh, Jonathan, you have a comment? Uh, yeah, I kind of, uh, I see Lori's point and Cindy's point, but uh, I see in the paragraph that it does say slow residential growth and focuses on developing recreational and commercial. So it's, it does, it doesn't uh, say slow recreational and commercial. Um, but I was thinking maybe we could, after developing, maybe we could put steady recreational and commercial since that's what we want to go for is recreation and commercial. I think that would be my only change would be to put steady after uh, developing. Or something of that nature. Okay, uh, Kathleen, you have a comment? Um. 
I actually like the restricted in and slow residential growth. Um, I, I think, you know, if it says the, if it delineates the, um, the commercial uh, growth as it does, I, I'd rather that. I, I guess I, I'm just a little bit concerned with the growth. Um, I, I, you know, I, I like the charm of the town um, and uh, I, I'm fearful about encouraging uh i guess development so i i, I like the uh the restricted and and slow residential growth myself and then uh, i think you know i i think a developer is going to want you know if they're interested in coming here and they think they have a a, a product a resource that is going to flourish I, I think i don't think uh this will stop them Okay. Uh, Jeff, are you uh, with us? I was thinking Jeff could uh, maybe, there's a comment section he could maybe type in there if he can hear us. Idea. And guys, I, I'm, I'm listening. I had to go get a charger, so you might not be able to see me anymore, but I'm right here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, we're having a little trouble with Jeff's audio. Um, so, uh, let's see, we've heard, uh, Chris, did you want to make any comments? Um, yeah, sure. There's one aspect of that first sentence that's not been captured in this discussion, and that's the word renewal. Um, the focus being that renewal means redevelopment and putting things to a new modern use bringing in cafes where build, antique stores have sat. Um, and that's an incredibly important aspect of that. Um, the word steady and steady growth came right from the public workshops, the two workshops we had. Um, and that's why it made it in that, in that this way. And we did that before the, the survey we did. Um, the last thing is, I'm not quite sure how Lori's um, first fragment of the sentence fits into the rest of that sentence or the rest of that paragraph. Um, so uh, it, the whole thing may need some wordsmithing. You know, if, if you agree to incorporate that slow residential growth, it, it may need some wordsmithing. I thought that where it says, for example, it talks about the things that, um, you know, are, are recreational in, uh, examples of recreational things. Um, commercial development is is very important too, and uh, that was a um, you know major point of the public comments and the economic development committee and Larry's group. Um, so uh, I, I, I guess I, what I want to say is that I I don't I'd be reluctant to see the planning commission remove the word renewal or that theme of renewal. Uh, because it's it's so important to this this plan and what I think is critically important for the town's future. So Chris, I think the the word renewal can absolutely stay, but I, I think that the tact for renewing things is more of developing our our amenities, our attractiveness as a destination. Um, you know, you have your ecotourism, you have um, different avenues for renewal that are not residential growth. And I think that that is what people have communicated that they wanted. And we should, you know, we, sh we should indicate to people because we don't, we don't want to confuse people and we don't want to have proposals in front of us that are um, at odds with what people want and what our vision might be. And I, I just think for this particular iteration of the comprehensive plan, I don't think that we should be engaging in a lot of additional residential growth because we're gonna have that going on this, this period of the comprehensive plan. Um, and then the next 10 years, um, you know, we might revisit the whole conversation but right now we have plenty of residential renewal going on in and near the beaches and, and we don't, we don't need to overdo it. This cycle is 
my opinion. But the, the word renewal can absolutely stay because I agree that that we should constantly be looking, you know, we should be looking for ways to renew everything. But renewal indicates that if you're going to make a three-story building with uh, condos at the top, that you might be adding a lot more growth. So, you know, you've opened up, you know, the can of worms into, well, what does slow mean? And, you know, it's kind of vague. I'm, I mean, uh, does that mean we can only make it a single story or no apartments on top or condos on townhomes on top? Or what does that mean? So I guess I'm a little confused, you know, in the term slow. What does slow mean? Um, hey, could, I, we, I, uh, could we uh, ask Jeff again? Uh, did you want to make some comments, Jeff Larson? I don't have a way to talk. <laughs> oh, we hear you. You're on there. Hear you. Oh, you do? We hear you now. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know why I must have hit some accidentally connected. <laughs> um, I thought that there was already a provision that already sort of limited quantitatively the residential growth. So, I mean, are we just trying to, you know, put that in some sort of narrative? But I, I, I thought that it was, it had already been determined what the residential growth at Chesapeake Beach was. If I could just weigh no? in, that, in, in part, I don't have a real objection with calling the town's policy slow growth because in effect it is and 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 because there for one of the reasons is that there's not much land to develop right. uh, and um, so slow growth is likely to happen um, and and that's fine but i i really respect what cindy's saying about incorporating that term slow growth and the signals that it sends to the development community and it, it's true, if you want renewal, you want redevelopment, you want positive aspects, a developer sees that word slow growth and I can assure you, and I know they get cold Stay feet away. and they back away. They, they say, well, you're not willing to stick with me through the whole process that's necessary to get my project approved. And, and that will be counterproductive to the town. But, but the notion of slower growth, I, I think that's de facto what the land use planning is already, what our municipal growth, uh, look out uh, projected, um, you know, there are no more heritages or, or Richfield stations or Bayview Hills. Uh, we are in a maturing, um, a, a maturing state of affairs now as a, as a community. So. We could words, still words develop. Really matter, though, we could, that word does signal something. <laughs> we could st we could still develop the baseball fields and make it a three story, four story, five story facility with condos and townhomes, or that front area along two sixty and two sixty one. I know they wanted to put at least what was it twenty condos in that one corner area. So I mean, there's still opportunities to you know expand the population, and that could be. You know, 10 people could be a lot for that area. You know, it, it's really, um, I think the problem is, is terminology matters in a, in a uh, comprehensive plan. And um, my experience is, is that if you want to have the commercial and the uh, recreational side of it, you've got to coordinate it with what uh, your, your idea as a group, as a community is, as far as how you want to develop it. If you say slow, then that guy at the corner may say, oh, gee, I better sell my properties because I won't be able to build that big old thing he wants to build at the corner there. So, I mean, I'm just, I mean, I appreciate you guys who don't want to, I don't want to have it any larger than it is now either, but I also do want to see some renewal. So I just want to make sure that we don't shoot ourselves in the foot by limiting it with that one term. Uh, and I think we have to think about that before we commit right now to that term. I think we have to really think about it. <laughs> we really do. It's my opinion. Do we even have to say embracing anything? Can we just say embracing renewal? <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. To, Is there... I, mean, I, I do this think we need to discuss that we do not want growth ahead of the current infrastructure. If we... You know, it, you know, I'm from an area where they outdid, you know, we had, didn't have enough roads for all the traffic. This is where you get into a problem. 260 and 261, we cannot hold a lot more extra 
you know, uh, commercial or any kind of traffic along there. So we have to be careful when we do our planning that we keep things at a size that we can accommodate on the on that particular corner, that intersection right there. So maybe we have to go with something uh, like, I don't know, not slow, but in alignment with infra infrastructure, I think kind of, I don't know. I'll let you guys yeah, and, on this one. And I also think that we are not, um, advanced enough in our process of design standards for this town that we need to be engaging in um, reviewing some of these these plans i mean we have in this comprehensive plan uh in the draft places where we have drawn areas that can take major uh residential buildings and I I just don't think we're ready for that in any of our planning and any of our design standards and it's I think this is the wrong time to engage in that not that that can never happen but I don't think that people have communicated that they wanted that I think that there's plenty of opportunities for mom pop shops to develop if we focus on our infrastructure and our amenities um, well, Lori, how about something to the effect of growth that is commiserate or, well, I like the word alignment, but, but something that allows us to retain the idea that we will be amenable to a little growth so that we don't keep people out who may want to change over an area that's, you know, I've got an area here on the Bayside that the thing is falling, the structure is falling down and it's right there where you want to put a new business in. But if I hear slow growth, why would I put a business in over there? You know, it's like, hey, yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't make any money off that business. So we have to be very careful about this. Um, so, uh, Chris, unless you have an idea about how to reword that, um, I think we're, um, I think the majority of the people I'm hearing is wanting to go towards a slow, the slow side of things. And I love the idea of slow, but I just don't think it's the right terminology for this, um, this okay, matter. Well We've, uh, if, let me just ask, is there a motion to change the wording? And if there's a motion, then we can vote on it and we can move on. We have a motion. So Larry, I'd like to make a, a motion to remove the word steady, did it say steady residential growth or steady growth? It said um, slow residential growth. Well, my, yes, I said slow residential growth. That's and, what yeah. um, sure, I'll make that motion. Um, I'll make a motion to change the wording as I described and as it appears on our agenda. Okay, so the motion is to change the first sentence to read in embracing slow residential growth and focusing on developing recreational and commercial amenities. Uh, we have a second. I'm going to second that because I think it's all right. I missed what he said. I missed what uh, I think Jonathan was talking. Who was talking, Jonathan? Yeah, I think I think somebody I'm else. Uh, yeah, I said I'm going to second it because I I think the uh, the wording. Uh, it does differentiate the residential growth from the commercial and the recreational. So I, I think the, uh, the wording that she made the motion for sounds good to me. So I'll second it. All right. So we have a motion. We have a second. Uh, let's, uh, let me go down the list. Uh, now, can we have discussion first? We always discuss after we have a second. Can we have a discussion first? Yes. Go ahead. Um, I think that before we move on this, we need to bring it back in a written format and and um, put it up again uh, and have us think about it because uh, changing it, I think we need to we need to bring it back one more month. I really think we need to think about this. I think it's a very important. First of all, I don't, I'm not understanding what slow necessarily means. Does it mean no, or does it mean a, tr a trickle? What does slow mean? I don't really understand that in um, a terminology that it would be under understandable to developers and, and business people. Um, and I, I think it's vague. I think it's a vague way to term anything uh, as far as growth is concerned. Uh, I think we have to be more specific. 
Okay. Um, anybody, so anybody I would else? I would like to ask that we think about this and bring it back another month and and have it written up and and bring it back for uh, another uh, another discussion. Okay. Anybody else comments? I agree with Cindy. I, I I'd like to be new. I, I um, would like to re-review it because I think it's in, it's important. What obviously we've had a great discussion about it. Um, so we're we're not all exactly um, understanding, and each of us, I'm sure, has our own definition of what slow means. So I, I for one, would uh, I I would. Uh, support Cindy's idea that we look at it, bring it back in written form. Okay, anybody else? So I can take the pressure off this situation and say that I'm happy to discuss this further and for us all to bring ideas of how we can get the type of growth that we say we want without getting additional residential growth. So if we, we would to like remove, you need to, to remove do your that. Motion, then. Okay, so Laura uh, has agreed to withdraw the motion. Uh, so on the condition. And, uh, oh. and put it for future discussion. Okay, uh, are there any public uh, on the line here that would like to comment or have issues they'd like to bring to the commission? So Larry. Larry. Yeah, uh, all right, we, we have no more this, public comment. All right, Lori, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, so I would like to make that motion official to um, have a discussion about the type of growth that we need and how to we word the vision so that we get that type of growth. Um, as an official endeavor of this body. Okay, well, we'll add that to the agenda for the next meeting. Uh, if you forward, uh, commissioners would like to forward uh, their suggestions for uh, change in wording or not, um, forward that and we'll add it to the agenda for the next meeting. That's awesome, Larry, thank you. Okay, uh, I believe that's everything on our list, on our agenda. Uh, there, is there anything further? Oh, I want to make one comment. Um, there was a discussion, a public discussion the other day that I was on with Zoom on the library uh, that's going to be built in North Beach. Um, they showed a concept plan that um, they're pretty much di done with the, uh, the drawings. The thing that concerned me, uh, I was talking before the meeting about this, is the public, uh, the parking rather, um, and my concern about the public parking, that's gonna probably be uh, one of the issues that they're gonna have uh, with that uh, facility. Um, so my concern to our town council is, is there any comments that we can make or is there any anything that we can do to, um, come up with some idea that would allow the citizens who are going to be using the library to be able to use it for free and charge parking for anybody else. But we've got to find a creative way to be able to keep that free for all of our citizenry. Uh, I'm concerned they're going to have to make it paid parking. Uh, I hope I'm wrong on that, but I've had experience where that has happened near a beach town, uh, near a beach uh, when there's a library. Um, so that's been my biggest concern. Uh, the other concern I have, and I had it with the, the school as well, and that is, it, it doesn't seem like they designed it for a future of potential uh, virus issues or viral concerns. Um, the, um, the, uh, the other thing that I wanted to bring up, and maybe with the town council can talk about this if they get this message, is that we need to address outdoor lockers so that we can pick up things and not have to go inside a library, but drive through and pick up our books on the way you know, through the parking lot so that we can have access to books and media even through a pandemic. Um, I know the our current library system just started doing that with the brown bag system, but we still have to get out of our car, go into the library, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, that's two things on the library. And I just want to bring that up as a uh, an item that you guys may not have known about. So there you have that. And that's it. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Good meeting, I think. We have uh, had a lot of 
useful and interesting discussion. Uh, and we will meet again in about two weeks, I think, two or three weeks. So uh, Chris, uh, you have, uh, we're going to be discussing uh, the comprehensive plan, hopefully. Uh, so look forward to seeing what you've got on that. I think before we go much further, we should uh, have a real facilitated discussion of growth and the land use chapters. We have three new members now, four essentially, if you count Lori, but she's not as new as everybody else. But um, I think we do need to step back and bring everybody up to speed and, and, and change course if the majority wants to. But we need to have that discussion. And this conversation of the vision statement really brought that to the fore. So I, I could uh, bring back all the data and the projections and the exit, you know, where we are in terms of building out the existing subdivisions and the, the, this town center idea and how it's been shrunken and all that stuff uh, and what renewal re redevelopment could actually mean. Um, and, and then basically starting from that, that baseline again, and then okay. we can answer these questions about how to frame a vision statement. Okay, that sounds very good. Yeah, sounds good. Good. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay. Right, what's the All date right. of our next our next meeting, Larry? Is what date? I think the twenty sixth. Is that the right? Twenty sixth. Okay. I think oh. that's the right date. Great. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Larry. Bye, Bye everybody. Nice to meet you guys. Thank Bye. you, Chris. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. You too.